Welcome to the very first edition of Headlines This Week. I'm your host, Derek Lila, and today we have a special guest on the show. Welcome to the show, Mr. Bernard. Thank you. Uh, could you please just tell us a little bit, just recap a little bit about yourself and your, your, your company? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm Bernard Turion, the President and Chief Executive Officer of uh, HPQ Silicon Resources. Uh, Canadian technology resource company. We're um, focused much more on developing a new pathways to make silicone metal, which is in silicone metal is it's one of those unknown metal that is at the center of the renewable energy um, revolution that's been going on. And yep. uh, although we've been working at this long time, um, it, we, we haven't been working at it for a full decade, but half a decade. We started in 2015. We were a standard exploration company looking at quartz, which is one of the yep. raw ingredients needed to make silicone metal. And what we discovered okay. over time is that it's not the, the, not the raw material that, that is the key. It is fundamentally the technology behind it. And that's what we've been focusing on. Now, understand that right now you do have a uh, proprietary technology that mm -hmm. you invented, your company invented, and that you're using to purify silicon. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, I'll clarify something. Well, HPQ did not invent it. HPQ was okay. the uh, driving force behind it. The, um, the technology whiz and the technology brain power behind it comes from Pyrogenesis uh, Canada. Um, okay. And, and, and that and was I a strategic plan. Is one of your partners. The, the, yeah, well, Pyrogenesis is more than a partner. They're basically the technology um, driver behind, behind the, the PureVap uh, process. Uh, okay. Because it's it, it was a it, it was a company strategy to instead of trying to develop as a junior company a a big scientific background where you become a very expensive R and D company we decided to outsource our R and D through our partnership with Pyrogenesis and it's uh it's paying off handsomely um, in the technology wise it's putting us in a unique position to um, to be able to benefit from the uh, the oncoming uh, green revolution. How far are you um, from, uh, from commercialization? And I understand you've been working on this since 2015. So when I say a decade, mm -hmm. you haven't actually, um, so this started in 2015 from, from what yeah. we understand, or, or was it before? No, no, it, it was literally 2015. In 2015, we were mostly nothing else than, than, than a quartz exploration company. Um, okay. it's, it's, it's the, you know, there was the graphite phase, there were the excitement, everything else. It was the beginning in 2015 was the beginning of the excitement for the renewable energy sector, uh, graphite, yeah. lithium, and all those, those type of materials came, came into play. Um, as those situation mature, our, our strategy was to develop a new technology. In 2016, we had our pilot plant, uh, not a pilot plant. A, um, where we started to do some advanced metallurgic testing to, to prove that the concept that pyrogenesis was developing could transform our quartz into high purity silicone metal. Uh, and in 2016, we took the strategic decision that, you know, it's very nice to be able to prove that laboratory, we can do that, but we need to go uh, to be able to demonstrate mm -hmm. commercial yeah. viability. And this is what's going to be happening next year. And yeah. in 2017, we partnered up with a uh, French company that had done a lot of R&D and what, what is known as uh, upgraded metallurgic root process to make uh, solar grade silicon metal, the key ingredient behind solar panel. But what we always knew and always saw that was the great potential for silicone to replace graphite um, in the in the renew in the um, energy storage segment of the industry. Uh, and okay. what really happened in 2019 was that, that became much more clear, that became a much more defined opportunity that we could very easily, with what we're doing, um, look at commercialization because it's at the beginning stage of the development. So uh, our unique position of having the pure VAP to make the silicone metal, because silicone metal is not something you mm -hmm. want, being able to do it, and then yeah. our, our unique partners' capacity, either Apollon or, or, or Pyrogenesis, to make the, sil the nano-type silicone powders that are going to be needed by the market puts us in, yeah. in, in a very unique advantage. So in 2020, we're going to be, you know, um, uh, we should be hopefully getting rewarded for uh, what we've been doing very discreetly over the years. <laughs> 
I mean, looking back at all the accomplishments in 2019, I mean, it was just stunning because I, I read another story about how Gen 2 actually broke ground construction. Um, we actually visited your plant in Montreal, the pyrogenesis plant in Montreal, which was interesting. Um, and, uh, uh, um, and your partner also, pyrogenesis, is doing great strides with their own other businesses. So there's, there's a lot going on in 2019. Um, how do you feel about that year? How do you feel about 2019? <sighs> I hate to use the buzzword, but 2019 was one of those, like, turnaround reorganization. There was a big change in the goal of what HPQ was, was going to do in 2019. Uh, when we started, we were going to hold on the solar side of the market. And by the mid of the year, we realized the opportunities and the markets um, that we can attack are were in different spaces and we realized that you know we could we could do something quicker in com commercialization by focusing the battery space so we've done that transition to put more of our attention on those market segments that doesn't mean we walked away because okay. the pure vap has always been there the pure vaps the pure vap's greatest shrink is its ability to transform quartz with carbon into silicone metal in a much more efficient way than okay. anybody else and at a much more, yeah. um, basically, a much a smaller scale potential resources. So um, okay. that's really been what we've been focusing on and developing and pu pushing forward and, and, and try to get done. And, it's, and the opportunities are becoming very, very clear. When we started in 2015, okay, silicone, for, silicone in the battery space wasn't known. P people knew about lithium, people knew about graphite. Okay, we've now reached a point where the yep. industry is going to need so much energy storage because the problem with renewable energies is that they generate energy when you don't really need it. So the, night, the real solution for that has to be in the oh, battery space. Yeah, well, it's, it's at nights, at winds and everything else. The, the, cycles, the, the cycle are reversed. So it's very clear yeah. it's, going to be ener it's going to be energy storage is going to be the driving force. Okay, uh, Even Bill Gates, who's yep. a big investor into renewable energy, said, you know, at this stage, there, there doesn't need to be too much more push into the technology development for, for solar energy, renewable energy. The push has to be in the energy storage place. Now, storage. silicone metal, so yeah, storage. But silicone metal can replace graphite in a much more efficient way in the sense that it can hold... Graphite barely holds any energy. Graphite has its reason in lithium batteries, but it doesn't really add to the capacity of the battery. It's material you put there. Uh, the joke is by Elman Musk that a you know, lithium battery is more a graphite battery. But the problem is graphite doesn't have a, a, a lot of energy capacity to hold. Yeah. Silicone does. Silicone has a 10 times more that. What that means is for the same size batteries, you can get you know, maybe you know, 40, 50, 60 percent energy improvement. Think about that, what that would do for your cell phone. Think about what that would do for your car. Think about it for everything else. Now, it's, it, it's at the beginning of a phase of how you're going to develop those type of silicon. But what has become very clear from the research that's been out there is that you need to be able to make nano, either porous silicon or nano structured silicon. Well, Okay. Lo and behold, so, because of all my years of working in the industry with, with solar people, um, my partner Apollon has a worldwide patent to take metallurgy grade or basically pure vap type silicone metal and yeah. turn it into porous silicone wafers that can be turned into porous silicone powders for batteries. And with Pyro, yeah. we've discovered we could use their expertise in making uh, uh, silicone uh, metal powders which they've developed with 3Ds, and use that expertise to manufacture or basically transform the PureVap process to allow it to also manufacture powder. What can we expect out of HPQ Silicon in 2020? In a nutshell, it's everything that you know, we've been going for. First of all, the PureVap plant is going to be operational. Second of all, a lot of the work we have done in battery space, which we haven't really talked about, is going to become, we'll be able to start talking about it. And we're going to be able to start producing samples for industry, for the industry, basically for the battery industries. Uh, I just read an article about a supposedly a startup, which is taking some material to produce it, and their excitement was they're going to go from one ton capacity a year to 10 ton capacity a year. Uh, we're going to have a capacity to start nice. producing around 50 ton per year. That's our starting point. Um, but we will figure ways to, to be able to push it much more. 
So I think we're just nice. it, 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 it's um, it's sort of rare that we're the right timing for our move into battery space, taking advantage of all the work we've done in the solar space. It's 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 you know we're not starting from scratch. We're much more advanced, and nobody can match what we're doing. It's not. Yeah. For the 50 ton a year, it's not going to be something that big competitors can do. So it's, all our competitors in this space are nothing else than small startup. But they're the small startup. They're attracting massive investment from the big players. So we're much more well, advanced. I would say Pyrogenesis do. at this point is a small startup. I mean, they have, they have been signing, you know, 20, 40 million dollar deals. Um, so, well... For a startup, yeah, but like I, Uber, I, 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 I was talking startups, <laughs> but I, I was talking more about startup in the the battery space, okay, in the silicone for battery space, okay, yeah. and all those people are doing are just starting up, but they all have to buy their raw ingredients everywhere else at higher prices and get it. We don't have that problem. We control the raw ingredient, we control the end product, so we can deliver to the industry a product. Um, of a high quality and the consistency, consistency that nobody else can. And that's really the key of what we're doing. Well, it's been great to have you on the show today, Mr. Bernard. And uh, how's the weather out there in Montreal this morning? Uh, it's beautiful and sunny. Cold, but beautiful and sunny. Awesome. Thank you, and uh, um, uh, thanks for being on the show, and catch you on the next one. <laughs>